after I made some phone calls today, we're a little conservative on that. Uh, probably maybe a little too conservative, but we're waiting and seeing what the market is going to do. Uh, I'm actually uh, in contact with uh, vendors to try to get that get a price that won't be lower than that. But right now it's considerably higher. So that may be an issue we have to address or look at. But that's a significant increase. Where we've had some other increases in it are, are things like uh, our custodial supplies are not. Well, our custodial supplies are not because our contracting services went down. And that's a reflection of us doing work in house. We decreased contracting when I'm doing the hybrid floors to the gymnasium by a contract. But we had to pick up the material costs. Of course, that's an ultimate savings. Yeah, a couple of thousand dollars a year savings just by doing that. Um, we did increase a couple of areas also. We picked up integrated test management inspections. We're now doing monthly test inspections in our schools, um, which is something that the DOE recommends that is, is done. So we picked that expense up. But overall, that contract <coughs> service has decreased. Um, We've also asked for a small increase in our equipment service for our custodial equipment. If some of the equipment is 10 years old, it's starting to get tired. Um, it needs to have additional service to keep it in, in good operating condition. Our budget, as you can see, mine is, uh, we have the picture up there, that it's approximately $180,000 increase. The largest portion of that is, is here. We, we use about 61,000 gallons of heating oil at Concord Middle School and about 71,000 gallons of heating oil at the uh, high school. And you can get it, I guess, it's substantial if you compare that to our houses. Uh, with our new boiler plants going into the high school, we're hoping, we, we're not hoping, we will be decreasing the total damage. That hopefully will help offset the, the cost of the uh, oil plant uh, bonds. Beyond that, that's what we have for our, our increases. Our CIP came in at the same level as last year. Uh, most of our operating budgets, our maintenance supply budgets, all came in at the same level as last year. We feel quite comfortable that we'll be able to continue to uh, provide food quality service to schools. Um, and then again, with this additional training in-house and doing more and more in-house, those savings are realized by non-contracting allows us to actually do more work. So, okay, I did that well for you. Good, and you saved more. <laughs> Questions for Greg? Um, I'd just like to have you explain for the public uh, the two largest percentage increases are bond and principal. Uh, payments about K through 8, 9 through 12, and I, I think it might be helpful in one form for you to explain what that, what we're doing with that money and why we're doing it. Well, as you know that we are uh, working on installing a, a new boiler plant at the high school. The boiler plant that we're, we're going to install is approximately a $350,000 expense. The town has kicked in products for two hundred thousand towards their action. We thought we had brought in two hundred thousand dollars into that. There's still a hundred and fifty thousand dollar expense that has to go into it. And those increases in our principal interest on our bonds reflect those costs that we have to carry for the additional bonds for the hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The other question you are developing, I think, a master capital improvement plan. Correct. Um, which is not reflected in this budget, I think. Correct. Um, we do have a CIP that is is our regular capital improvements, which is 176400 Sorry, I got the $450. That is doing improvements to our school. That does walk away at those capital items that we have started to identify for all the schools. Um, and I'll just give you a, a, a quick example. The, the uh, 30 building needs a new roof. That's in that particular CIP. Um, expanding cameras, security covers, and things like that in that CIP request. So we are taking those items 
that we've identified to um, increase our facilities and, and keep our asset uh, in good working shape. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, is is the, there a repair for the bleachers in this budget? There is not a repair for the bleachers in this at this time. Okay. Okay. I guess the question would next would be why, unless I didn't hear, why is there not? We're still developing the cost on the repairs at this point, uh, and, and don't have that total figure because it is a substantial amount of work to get to the bottom line of what I've got to do to bring the bleachers up to proper operating. Um, so it may be you taking out of our operating budget, some of it, and some of it may out of our CIP budget as we readjust to be able to make some of those changes. It's not listed as a line item at this point, but it, it may become part of my CIP as we might change things or do some cost savings in other areas to be able to realize those repairs. So in other words, when you decide on a solution for the bleacher problem, you believe you can cover it with the existing funds you allocated in this budget? That's my plan. Yes. Well, I'll let you get away with that. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions? <clears throat> okay. Jeff, are you next? All right. <clears throat> Before I get into the uh, budget summary piece, I just would like to take a moment and uh, highlight a few of uh, the achievements and at the program level and at a student level. Um, really fortunate to have some of the top-notch facilities uh, in this community. Our kids have a wonderful opportunity to uh, participate on um, multiple number of playing fields and uh, track, our tennis courts, the uh, pool, and our recent uh, athletic facility down at the Hanover Field. So, um, in addition to that, I think we have a, an outstanding booster organization that uh, really the partnership with the school and the boosters has really um, supported uh, our students and our programs. And this, that contribution from the boosters really supplements probably about a third of the athletic budget. So um, instru very instrumental in, in the success of um, the athletics at Cape Elizabeth. Our participation rate is uh, very strong at 70% in the high school and 85% roughly in the middle school. Uh, we offer 17 different sports in the high school, so 48 teams. Um, and in the middle school we have 12 different sports and 40 teams. So the opportunity for uh, boys and girls to explore interests and pursue passions um, is certainly there and um, thriving. Um, and just in the past 10 years, and I'll kind of talk about some of the other things that Cape Elizabeth students do well at, not just the wins and losses, but uh, just in the past 10 years, 38 conference championships and 33 state championships. So um, really impressive and just uh, very fortunate to be part of uh, that program. Cape Elizabeth student athlete. They're students in every essence of the word, uh, with an average GPA of a 90.75. So uh, with the help of Gary's staff, we've been able to look at uh, participation and take GPAs and put all that together and um, been able to uh, track that, that figure. So it's a nice piece to have. So thank you, Gary. Um, Cape Elizabeth student athletes are conference all-stars. They're all-Americans. They're sportsmen and sportswomen. Um, a lot of times I see our students, they're the first ones to help an opponent up. Um, and as a result, there's six sportsmanship banners hanging in our gym. They're also musicians, they're actors, they're artists. And I'm not sure if anyone's had an opportunity, but uh, going to some of our sporting events, we have a lot of our students um, either singing or playing an instrument for the national anthem. And, um, just recently, I was at a girls' ice hockey game. And, one of our students played the national anthem on our violin. It was just, uh, it was an, an outstanding, it was impressive, and uh, really moved a lot of people in the building. So, uh, they're also mentors. Um, our students are 
tutoring in the middle school. So the athletes are tutoring, or tutoring in the middle school in the Pond Cove. They're serving on various school committees and extracurricular clubs. They're also youth coaches and youth, official, youth, youth officials um, and role models for our younger students. And I think this most recently at one of our basketball games, just seeing the younger kids asking for the students' autographs and uh, signing shirts and posters. And it was, it was very impressive and uh, fun, to, fun to be part of. And it was the volunteer. The, our students are volunteering with Special Olympics, uh, the senior to senior programs, the kids with fire and rescue. Um, so they do it all, and they do it all very well. So with that being said, as I kind of put a bright side on things, um, there is a bit of an increase to the uh, athletic budget, a 14, roughly about a 15% increase, um, which is approximately $18,000. And half of that I had put in for the athletic trainer. And that is a $9,000 increase uh, basically to provide a more accurate reflection of what we're spending, um, what the actual spending is uh, for that line item. And, and comparatively, I think, contacted a couple of our local schools and Yarmouth, their athletic trainers, around 30000 Falmouth is spending about 22000 and Greeley's about 18000 but difference being the booster organizations are picking up any additional funding beyond the 18 or 20. The athletic trainer is, uh, is the first responder. They're the ones, when there's an athlete on the, uh, injured, when that happens, they're the ones there first assessing, um, taking control of that situation, and really helping that student through uh, some, you know, potentially some difficult situations. And, we're fortunate to have a very good athletic trainer. Um, she's established some excellent relationships with uh, the students. Uh, they've built a lot of trust there. And in turn, um, that trust has allowed for some better assessing of injuries and uh, helping students get back to, uh, student athletes get back to playing and um, healthy. So, She's essentially treating about 1,500 um, injuries. And, it, that, and those range from uh, a year. And those range from anything from, uh, you know, it could be a cut, bruise, to some of the more severe injuries like a torn ACL or a concussion or something like that. So there's quite a range there, but roughly 1,500 treatments a year. Um, so on a safety side, in athletics, that, that the, the trainer is, is really a, a vital part of uh, the program. And uh, so that's more of a uh, true reflection of, of our spending. Uh, some of uh, the other side of things on a more easing some of the financial burden that our families and our boosters or organizations are picking up reflect the dues and fees line item. Um, there's a 17 hundred dollar increase to the dues and fees and then another thousand dollar increase um, to officials which would help us keep in compliance with our title IX program that we have established now currently we're in a two-year program and um, our goal is to achieve equity uh, funding across the board for our boys and girls programs and the last increase was for our uniforms, which was a $6,000, $6,300 increase uh, to this line item, which would get us back into our five-year uh, uniform rotation the past couple of years. That has been put on hold to um, help support other parts of the uh, athletic budget, so to make sure we're able to keep some of these programs. and. The, we're about three teams behind schedule there. So this would get us back to um, where we should be with funding uniforms. So that was, those are the three major um, pieces to the increase. Aside from that, everything else has stayed at a uh, maintenance budget, um, travel and uh, our supplies. Uh, kind of really 